So I did it. I racked up 100 hours in Diablo 4 as a brand new player, and I've got to say it's been quite the learning curve being my first ARPG. But was it all plain sailing and out and out action throughout? Well, kind of. So we're going to carry on from my last video of is it worth it for new players because I feel this is really going to be the nail in the coffin after I've played it for this many hours and giving my honest opinion on is it actually worth it for new players or not. If you want to see some more stuff like this on the channel, if you could chuck a like or a dislike on it, that'd be sick. Whatever floats your boat, mate. Anyway, let's get into it. Early game is where I was really having loads of fun. I was learning the mechanics of the game and understanding the skill tree a bit better and found myself becoming ridiculously powerful proper quickly. But the best part of the early game, or at least up to my level 50 grind, was definitely the campaign. I really do think the campaign is probably one of the best I've played in a while. Where I said in my last video, it just keeps sucking me in. I felt myself ditching side quests and what I would call distraction dungeons at this point and heading straight for the yellow markers on the map. The interactions with the NPCs throughout the campaign and especially Lorath and his sick voice made the story even more compelling. I was grateful that I had a helmet on most of the time though because when I got into a deep cutscene I forgot that my necromancer does actually look like he's from an Alice Cooper tribute band. Anyway, I couldn't wait for the next cutscene to find out how this story was going to evolve and when I did get towards the end and found out what I think Horny Lilith's true motivation was, I was genuinely shocked. But I didn't want the campaign to end how it did really. I didn't want to follow through with the Haradrim prophecy but I'll cover that more in another video because I don't want to spoil it just yet. Needless to say though, the campaign was banging and I do want a DLC for it. It held up all the way to the end, the cinematics were incredible, the voice acting stayed consistent throughout and especially Lorath because his voice is sick. I'm too damn old to hold your body out of hell. However, if I could change a couple of things about it, I do wish it had last longer into the end game and if there was maybe like a player's choice to the ending of the campaign, I think that would have been banging because the story could have swayed one a few ways and it would have been great to have that as an option. I know it's brief but that's going to be it for the campaign because I don't want to spoil it for you lot that haven't finished it yet. So this is going to bring me on to starting endgame which is what the bulk of this video is going to be about and what I feel like Diablo 4 actually is. At first this part of the game I was proper excited about starting. You go to the capstone dungeon and beat the boss which is basically a skill check boss to see if you've got enough melons to beat it. Managed to melt it pretty easy in world tier 2 and I was on to world tier 3 to begin endgame. The gear drops start to get better, the demons, bosses and all these other new mugs that start to spawn and new dungeons. From level 50 to 60 this was proper fun. Going around grabbing the grim favours for the tree whispers which is one of my favourite spots because I just like all the weird heads dangling about and chatting bollocks at me. Opening the whisper caches for the loot then going into nightmare dungeons to level up my glyphs for the next levelling platform, the paragon board. The paragon board is pretty sick how it's laid out. It can be quite confusing at first but by the time you get here and you actually read the glyphs you pick up and distribute the paragon points in the relevant places you will start seeing a difference. Same rules apply like I said in the last video. Don't worry about if you mess up the skill tree because you can change it which is great in a way as I think the game really encourages experimentation, especially when the inventory you're wearing plays such a huge part in your build. One thing that I found proper irritating though, you have to remove them one by one in reverse order that you place them. Sometimes this can take an absolute age to figure out that last one you put on and it's really time consuming. If Blizzard could maybe add a refund all paragon points button, I think that would be much better. Aside from that, this part of the game is really fun and I was starting to feel unstoppable. However, when I got to level 61, I was feeling like I was missing out. I wanted to try the season out as I opted for the Eternal Realm for my first character. So I went on absolute missions to find every single statue of Lilith and bring up my renown as well as any way points I might have missed. To do this a normal exploration would have either been nigh and impossible to do in a sensible time frame or I know for a fact that I'd have got well bored with it. So I turned to Map Genie and made a free account to mark off the statues I grabbed and it helped me get all the others. You only allowed 90 tracking items I think it is for the free version and I definitely weren't paying for an upgrade but it did save me loads of time even though it still took a few hours. If you're interested I'll leave a link in the description for the one that I used to get all of these. After grabbing everything I needed I decided to mug off my eternal character so he could return to his Alice Cooper tribute band and I started a brand new character in a different class ready to learn a brand new build and a new way of playing. Some of you may have seen Gareth the Pulverising Druid on my live streams. He is an absolute tank. Anyway, I skipped the campaign and began my levelling process which was much quicker this time round as I had all the renown and more experience in what I was doing. This gave me the same buzz I had when I first started but this time I had a little bit more knowledge. If you did watch my initial new player video you'd have seen that I do love having sick drip when I play a video game and the wardrobe was a real nice feature for me. So after having a look at the season pass I went all in for the premium version because I wanted all of the drip and if I'm being completely honest I'm not going to grumble about 8 quid for getting rewarded for playing the game as opposed to the rest of the stuff on the store which is like £25 plus per skin that is not my cup of tea that. I carried on blasting through and having a great time towards the end of my second character in world tier 3 and it was time to make my first jump into the final tier. 
World Tier 4. Here I actually played co-op for the first time in about 15 years in a video game with a couple of subs and it was proper fun. One led me to the second capstone dungeon as we did a couple of nightmare vaults together. When we got there I was like, you stand over there and if I start getting dicked you can get stuck in. Needless to say, I met with Darius in an earlier than recommended level and I felt like an absolute boy. We went and jumped into World Tier 4 and I immediately felt like a little fish in a big pond. I was getting absolutely one shot by everything. It was pretty funny though and it was fun doing it with subs and I was being carried around tier 100 dungeons where I really should not have been. So I made the decision to start grinding offline again and this is where I started feeling a bit different with my Diablo 4 experience. Which is going to bring me on to my summary of my first time playing Diablo 4 after 100 hours as a brand new player. I know I've only briefly gone over the campaign but that's mainly because I don't want to spoil it for people that either haven't started it or haven't finished it. The campaign is without a doubt my favourite part of the game. Story and character development, sound design, the visual dynamics and especially the cinematics. If anything I wanted more of it and I do hope there's a possibility of a DLC to expand where the story finishes but that's not something I've researched or looked into yet. My main issue with Diablo 4 now is that after 131 hours on writing this review with two characters in two realms with different ambitions I'm beginning to find the game an absolute slog to get where I need to get to in comparison to the early and the mid game. I do feel like I've hit a little bit of a wall. What I mean by that is when I really like a game, I like to try and get all the trophies in the game if I like it enough. So my main objectives in Diablo 4 now are to get a character to level 100 and beat Uber Lilith and have a go on hardcore mode for the level 50. Am I still going to be doing this? Yes I am, 100%. But am I going to be doing it at the intensity that I've been planning it so far? The answer is probably not. Main reason being is I've been completely sucked in through my experience. I literally haven't been able to put the game down and I've loved every minute of it. But a wall hit about 10 hours of playtime ago and I'm either missing something in the end game that's not the extra bosses or PvP, hell toys, dungeons etc. It's either an intentional rinse and repeat process or I am genuinely missing something. One thing that has made it more enjoyable is playing with subs and mates at this stage of the game. Does that mean I hate the game because I'm starting to feel bored now? Not at all. I feel I have already got my money's worth for the game but perhaps I expect a bit more in the game with the last 25 levels that I need to grind out. But as I say, running dungeons and world bosses or legion events with people in a party is fun and that is genuinely a new thing for me. But if there is something that I'm missing as part of the end game, please let me know in the comments. I would like to know what you all get up to at this part of the game and is there a way of making this grind more efficient without falling asleep with my controller in my hand? So should you play it? I'm going to say yeah, the campaign is incredible for many reasons. If you're playing it on Game Pass, it's definitely worth it just for the campaign alone. If you can get it on other platforms at a reduced sale price, I do believe it is worth it. £70? I'm not quite so sold on that. I've also really enjoyed the season pass that I've almost finished from my sick drip items and stuff to overload my horse with, and I definitely will be playing season 4. I think coming back to each season to try new builds out and mechanics is cool and it gives someone like me a chance to dip in and out of the game and not be stuck to it all the time because I do want to play other games. And like I have already said, my only criticism really is I either don't know how to efficiently play Endgame or it is genuinely a boring slog. Because at this precise moment, I am a bit bored of it and I don't quite know how to motivate myself to grind out these last 25 levels. Perhaps the only thing that I would have done differently is start with a seasonal character as opposed to an Eternal Realm character and I probably would have achieved the goals I set out earlier for level 100 and Uber Lilith in that time. But that's on me, that's not for any other reason. I would love to hear your thoughts on if you are a new Diablo player and how you've got on in your first few hours and if anyone has experienced anything similar with Endgame like myself. Let's have a chinwag in it in the comments section. I will have another video out soon with some proper basics like, you know, for a child beginner's guide because I would have done a few things differently and I will be doing some seasonal videos in the future because I do really like the game. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers mate.